to Laurel TV's Health Watch. I'm Dr. Trudy Hall, Vice President of Medical Affairs at Laurel Regional Hospital. Spring is in full swing, and that means the flowers and trees are blossoming, and most of us enjoy spending more time outside. But spring can be difficult for people with breathing problems. Allergies, asthma, and other pulmonary diseases are often impacted by our environment, so it is important to know your triggers. Dr. Uday Nadavadi is Director of Critical Care and Pulmonary Services at Laurel Regional Hospital. We recently spoke about pulmonary diseases and how they are impacted during the spring season. Dr. Nadavadi, how does allergies trigger asthma and other breathing problems? So allergies are body's reaction to allergens in the environment. These are small particles that the body of the allergen the body rejects um, and therefore um, when you get exposed to the allergen, the body's reaction to the allergen causes the narrowing of the breathing tube um, and that the person feels as tightness in the chest or the asthma. It feels like you can't take a breath. It feels like you can't actually take a deep breath. So you feel like you're trying to grab for air so it almost feels like somebody sitting on your chest, actually. That's what it feels like to me. Like I have something, somebody really heavy just on me and I'm trying to push them off, or maybe I have a brick on me and I'm trying to get it off my chest and I can't get, get it off to take in that deep breath. What do you recommend to your patients about just the allergy season and pretty much um, dealing with the high pollen and their breathing issues? So one, uh, know if you have allergy problems. The best thing to do is to check with your doctor if your problem is really allergy related. Um, if you have asthma, again, check with your doctor and make sure that the diagnosis is confirmed. If you keep having repeated problems, you should start treatment before the allergy season really sets in. Mm. Um, you can avoid the exposure to the known allergens. If you have pet allergies, you do want to minimize the exposure to the pets that you are allergic to. Um, if you have grass allergies, you want to be cautious about the environment. Um, and then take your treatment regularly. How do you make your recommendations of treating yourself, but then also what you may recommend for some options of prevention and also managing when a patient is short of breath? Um, there are treatments that prevent asthma from coming on. These are called the controller medications. Uh, you want to take them regularly as prescribed by your doctor. These are not the over-the-counter medications. So those medications, you should take them regularly. Over-the-counter medications are predominantly the allergy uh, medications. Right. And you can take them uh, over the counter, but you want to start them probably before the allergy season starts so that your body does not mount the reaction. Uh, and you should always tell your doctor what medications, even if they are over the counter, even if they are herbal, even if they are home remedies, because all of those do interact and result in the disease manifestation. So you want your doctor to know if you are taking something that's not uh, a traditional uh, medical compound. What about the inhalers um, that, that are being used? There are at-home inhalers and then there's the ones that people use in the community or when they're on the road. So what are your recommendations? So again, the inhalers are of two types, as we talked about. One is the controller therapy. These are typically the inhaled corticosteroids that you want to use on a regular basis as prescribed by your doctor. Then there are the rescue inhalers. These are the medications uh, in some form of albuterol that helps you open up your airway after you have developed the asthma attack. Uh, those you want to keep it with you. If, you are, if your child has asthma, you can send it to your school, child's school, and the school nurses can administer these. Um, and that you want to carry it with you uh, all around. Uh, the nebulizers are the medications that you can use at home when you have a severe asthma attack. Uh, by the time you need those medications, 
you should have seen your doctor and perhaps a specialist so that you can minimize the use of those type of medications. If your asthma is controlled, you should be able to enjoy everything that you want to because life is to enjoy. Exactly. Life is not to suffer. A lot of patients that die from asthma every year. Um, I recently had a 47-year-old friend who had an asthma attack and um, died. So how do you recommend when it can be, can't be managed at home and the um, information about when to go to an emergency room to seek immediate medical attention? What are your recommendations? Right, so asthma it can be a life-threatening disease. Uh, we hope that in 2015, with all the available treatments, we can stop that mortality from asthma. Um, in order to do that, you want to know your disease. Um, you want to take care of it. If you take care of asthma, we should not see the mortality. It is unfortunate that people take a disease lightly. Um, you don't want to live in fear of asthma attack. At the same time, if you know what triggers, if you know what you can do when you have asthma attack like that, um, then the mortality should be minimum. There was an old saying that often comes true, and that is most patients with asthma die with their asthma, not because of their asthma. I got diagnosed with asthma about four years ago. I actually am a marathon runner. I had ran about seven marathons, and the seventh one I had a lot of difficulty finishing. I couldn't figure quite why. So they worked me up and decided I had um, asthma with some allergies. So apparently the allergies is what set off the asthma. Once I, as long as, I don't feel like it impacts me at all. I feel like I can still do what I need to do as long as I manage it. Nice, and pull breath in deep. Pull, 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 pull. If I don't manage it and I don't use my inhale or take my medicine and stuff like I'm supposed to, then it definitely causes a problem. It can't, I can't do the things I want to do. I, I consider the pulmonary rehab a, a, a gem in this community. Uh, it is designed uh, to bring patients back to a, a, what I call a functional level. Uh, and those are for patients with pulmonary disease. It is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which most people know as COPD, chronic asthma, emphysema. We also have quite a bit of lung transplants, uh, post and pre. So any patients that have functional limitations due to pulmonary disease, with the pulmonary rehab program, we rehabilitate them back to some sort of functional level. What you and I take for granted, patients with pulmonary disease, it is very difficult to walk up steps, it is very difficult sometimes for some patients even to sit down and have a meal. And I just wasn't feeling my best. My wife happened to be out of town at that particular time. And I called her and told her that I was not feeling so well. So she recommended that I go and at least get things checked out. And in the interim, that's when things declined. <coughs> there was a lot of shortness of breath when I first entered into the first urgent care unit, my um, levels were at 22%. It was very, very low. And that's when they rushed me directly into an ambulance and then right into the hospital. He went in the hospital on August the 21st and he got out 11 weeks later. I mean, he couldn't move his fingers, his toes, anything. And so, um, they began to work with him here, get him off of the ventilator, and it was like day by day things begin to improve and they begin to work him out more. And um, thank God now he's up doing everything. But the diet has been the most significant change, and we're working on that, making some adjustments as we speak. We've changed how, uh, how we eat. We're working on getting better at it, but we have made some changes. Yeah, I typically was actively involved in working out at least three to four times a week. And now, thanks to Lower Regional Pulmonary Rehab, I have been back at almost my normal routine.
Just like now, he still comes to pulmonary um, rehab, and I come with him every day. Every time he's here, I'm here with him. Um, just to be an encouragement. A lot of times, they don't need you to do anything for them, but just to be there for them is um, a great help. So let's review some simple ways you can limit your breathing problem. Number one, know your triggers. Being aware of what causes your biggest breathing problems is the first step to prevention. Inside your home, keep it clean and free from dust. Vacuum often and clean often. That includes your carpet and curtains. If you have pets, keep them off the beds and furniture. Keeps room dry and windows closed to prevent pollen from seeping in. Number two, fix your leaky faucets and pipes to avoid developing mold. Don't use cleaning solution that contain harsh chemicals. The fumes can trigger a breathing problem. Use allergy-free pillows and make sure you wash and change your bed linens frequently. When you're outside, know the air quality and pollen count and avoid staying outside for prolonged periods. Pollution, pollen, heat, and humidity can trigger a breathing problem. Limit outdoor exercise. Also wear your sunglasses to protect your eyes and pollen and dust. My daughter has the worst allergies and I make sure she bathes when she comes inside, which is what I highly recommend. In all cases, don't smoke and avoid areas where smoke may be present. This include outdoor cafes and campfires. If you use an inhaler to help you breathe or carry an EpiPen for allergies, make sure you have it with you at all times. Let your friends and family know that you have a breathing problem so that they are able to react quickly should you have an asthma or allergy attack. Until next time, I am Dr. Trudy Hall. Stay well and have positive thoughts of wellness.